Okay, so now that we have our drawing set up and our coordinate system applied, we're going to go ahead and import in some tributaries. So this is GIS data of streams and creeks that we're going to use to help identify possibly our watersheds uh, within our, our design project here. So to do this and import it in a Esri shapefile, on the command line, type in map and you'll see if I type in map I, it brings up map import. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This is going to let you import in different types of GIS data. You can see there's some ASCII point files, some Autodesk SDFs, Esri, ArcInfo, uh, E00, and a bunch of other options here, MicroStation files, as well as uh, some spatial data transfer standards. We're going to use the Esri shapefile. That's what we're going to select. And you can see there's a lot of other legacy file formats as well, but let's go ahead and click on Esri shapefile. And what you're going to do is I've already navigated to it, but go to your civil or site design civil 3D, go into the working with GIS data. Under GIS data, you'll see that there's some different folders here. We can do this with any of these, but we're just going to do the hydro as an example. And then I'm going to show you a couple other methods and you're going to be able to determine which method is going to work best for your data and your project. But I'm going to go to hydro and I'm going to bring in the water feature shape file. You can also bring in the water bodies. Um, knowing what these mean, you're going to, depends on where your GIS data comes from, but the water bodies are lakes and ponds. The water features are the tributaries, which is what we were interested in here in this particular case. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. Now we bring up this dialog box and you can see that our current drawing system is PA83. Uh, NF is the data. The NAD83 is our state plane coordinate system. So if we had different coordinate systems, this would allow you to translate that data from one source to another, basically from one datum to another. So we're going to keep that and put this data into the Pennsylvania state plane system on north zone US foot. Here is the input data and you can see that it's going to go to a drawing layer. I'm going to select on that and I'm actually going to click on the ellipse button to the right and that's going to let us create a new layer or uh, create an existing layer or use the data to assign and create the layer. What we want to do is create a new layer. So we're going to create a new layer called C dash H Y D R. I got the dash in there. And then dash T R I B for tributary. And if you wanted to, you could do G I S so you can identify where that data comes from. I'm going to click OK. There's the input corner system. We'll leave that alone. Now the data, if we click on this, we can create what's called object data. So the attributes that are associated with the shape file, we can actually bring in and you can see all the different names. Now there's no, there's not attributes for everything, but unless you know what attribute you want to bring in, then you can uncheck or check on those particular attributes. It doesn't hurt to select all unless you got a, a lot of data. Um, in this case, like city name, number, we don't need all that. Um, but you might want to bring this in once, figure out which ones you really need, and then undo and redo it with the, just the ones you need. But that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We'll select everything, and we'll click OK with this. This, if we don't do this, then the objects will just come in as regular lines and polylines and they won't have any data associated. We don't have any points. If we did, um, if there were points in here, it would, we could choose how we want that point to be created, like which symbol. So if these happen to be hydrants that you were bringing in, then you could pick on the symbol for hydrant and then that's how it will be displayed in your drawing. Once we have this, we're just gonna click okay. Now, before I click OK, you can save this profile. So if you do this over and over again, you can save and load this profile so you don't have to keep clicking on these settings over and over again. We're just going to click OK. 
It's going to take a few seconds. It'll bring in all this data. We'll double click our wheel to zoom extent to do a zoom extents. And you can see that we've got these tributaries now. If I select that line, right click and go to properties, you can see this is the object data that I was talking about. So we definitely want the length. So the length might be something that we bring in. The feature ID, we definitely want to use. Um, you can see intermittent drainage map feature, what city name. Um, so those are the, the attributes that we really want. So the next time we do this, we could ignore all these other attributes and only select the ones that have data. Okay. But what we're interested in is just seeing where these streams are and how they may affect our drainage on our project. So the other thing I'm going to do is go to my layers properties and we'll go down to see hydro where we created that layer with the tributary. So if I scroll down, it was C dash. Let's check that again. I select that. Let's look at the properties. Maybe I missed it. So it's on C dash hydro tributary. It's by layer. So we want to edit that layer. It's properties. So let's go into our layer properties. There it is. So I overlooked it. And we'll just click on this. We'll change that color to blue. So now we've got our tributaries being shown. So that's importing a Esri shapefile.